on the corner he was dealing in drugs yeah got himself a box yep. chair and gave us some cuts now he's a podcaster his life he'll talk about it with us and now it's Jeff FM fuck Jeff FM my other word on this how's it going guys welcome back to Jeff FM episode 4 i'm feeling fucking great i feel alive i feel amazing um went to runyon uh, I went to chirotherapy, had some coffee, told people about my brain damage when they didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm kidding, that was so mean. <laughs> Bro, he's going to watch the edit. Oh my God, that's a joke. <laughs> what you say mm, that you only meant well. Oh, fuck. Welcome back to Jeff. Where all the fucking sunglasses are? I've been looking all over for them. Oh, <laughs> Yo, Welcome, back to Jeff FM. <laughs> Welcome back to Jeff FM. Welcome back to Jeff FM, everyone. Get up. Get Here's get our up. guest. Huh? Get up. Steven, don't, don't, don't. Steven, stay. 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 Stop. Stay. Make him sit get in the up. couch. Make him sit in the couch. Well, you're supposed to. You want to play this game? I can't. I can't. Play this fucking game. No, 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 no. Let's play this fucking game. I'm scared. I didn't want to. Yeah, I, I heard you guys doing something. I would slice your fucking head off. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. You think I'm joking. I take a week off. You guys had a little fun over here. I tried to come in no hat, and I wanted that to be the highlight of the episode. But you know what? You guys got your own little stuff in the works. So, yeah, how you been? Was there a guest? I got no soundboard. I'm already mad. Jeffrey, <laughs> uh, Miami you changed fight. you. <laughs> Miami did change me. I hear that uh, rumor going around that yeah. Miami changed me. But you know what? <laughs> The Miami Jeff was always in me. So you wearing socks on a boat? Uh, you want to go right into that? <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. Socks on the boat. I was laughing. I saw you so talking to a really hard. hot girl. I was like, "Let's go, banger." <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't talk about that. On no, here, you want to no, sit no, here? No, 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 yeah, get the fuck up. Okay. Go, go grab me, Lacroix. <laughs> I don't no. give a fuck. I'll sit over here. For I'll, real? Sit, I'll sit on this fucking thing the whole time. You're Steven, not gonna have a soundboard. Steven, get in. Yeah, well, I'll co- I'll eventually switch. But did you see his outfit? Look at the shoes. Look at the shoes he's wearing. <laughs> oh, you want in my closet? Yeah. Now, this is funny. This is Steven, funny that what we're, we're, we're you're doing, but the sunglasses. I had the green shirt that I wore to the fight this weekend, and I wanted to wear my green sunglasses to match, and I looked all over the house for an hour. <laughs> That's what you were doing? I was looking for those sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little frustrated. I came back fucking happy, man. I came back so happy. And normally that shit would get me so pissed off because you've done things like this in the past where you're taking my key fob and you don't tell me and I look all over the house for hours and there's nothing more valuable than time in this world. When you get to 31 years old and you want to do so much, it's just time is the most valuable fucking... You think it's fucking nutsack coin? You think nutsack coin is the most valuable currency? It's fucking time. And you just wasted an hour of my fucking time. And on this podcast, on this podcast, we get paid nothing right now, but potentially other podcasts make a lot of money in one hour. So all this pay that we would generate in the future upcoming months, once this podcast starts generating some revenue and we have an average rate, you will be... Doc pay for one full episode because one hour of my time. So say we get a ten thousand dollar ad read that's coming out of your pocket, <laughs> you motherfucker for stealing my fucking sunglasses, wasting an hour of my goddamn time. You came, you came in here so aggressive, I got so scared. I was not planning on it, man. I was planning on coming in here happy, showing off the new hair. I just got a cut. Let me show you. Oh, looks good. Look at that. I'll do a little spin. You know. You see that? What do you guys think? I know. <laughs> I know I told you I'd check in and I let you guys know when I'm getting a cut, but this was this is a new man here. I'm back to the old Miami Jeff. You guys some of you guys might like it, some of you guys might hate it, but I'll tell you what, I had a good time and I'm coming in here fresh. I cleared my head. I had the first vacation after a while and I have so much to talk about. That's why there's no guest today. That's why I'm the guest. I'm the guest, I'm the host. <laughs> Yeah. On my show, Jeff uh, FM. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's switch back because I'm, okay. uh, you know, I've had enough and I want my notes here. <laughs> Steven's still scared. It's funny, man. This was the first time I got out and I got to see people in over a year and a half, just like out in public. Miami's completely open, no masks. I'm triple vax, baby. Fucking. Hell yeah. yeah. And I was out there in the clubs. Yeah, Steven, have a seat. You're already doing too much. Right. Just chill out because I got a lot of stuff to talk about. And that's why we have no guests today, because I don't want to have somebody sit in, and I'm just going to rant about myself and my vacation that I went on. But there's a lot of good stories and a lot of inspiring stuff that I'm going to share with you guys here, because I was in a hole. I was in a dark spot for a year and a half, and that was pretty nice to get out of the house and, and see some people. We got to the fight. We had ringside seats. 
I'm sure you saw me on TV. <laughs> you know, I had this it's green like, shirt on. Yeah. Not but really. I didn't have any pictures of it. I didn't have any good content of it because I didn't bring my content boys. You had the best seat in the house. Like, there's big rappers there. Yeah, how did you get there? Like, yeah. Dana, Lil Baby, Migos, you were right there. I had to infiltrate crazy. Floyd Mayweather's team. So I was on Floyd Mayweather's, in his corner, basically. I had the bloody towels at my feet. I mean, Ryan Garcia, who was a pro boxer, ch- fucking champion, he came over to say what's up to me and security grabbed me like, hey, no, 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 you got to get out of here, buddy. <laughs> You can't be here. And I'm like, oh, Ryan, Ryan, I'll, I'll message you. It just felt so weird. What? The, yeah, Fat Joe was out there behind me, and he's a yeah. big shot in Miami. And it was just like all the... I actually sold Fat Joe my old seats that I had bought through Logan and friends and family because uh, of Mike's setup. But it, it's funny because Mike came on the show here saying that he's going to get me seats and we're going to be on camera. I didn't even see Mike at the event, but I got sent a <laughs> picture of him afterwards. Mike was up all the way in the fucking nosebleeds and he's calling me. He's like, hey, Jeff, where's your seats? Where's your seats? And I, what? Uh, yeah. Did uh, yeah. Mike, Logan's own best friend was up in the nosebleeds. Let's see if we can find a picture of him. There's Mike at the fight in Miami. <laughs> I told you a little earlier We have this plan For the weekend What we're gonna do I'm gonna shoot this thing With Trisha Yeah You know oh, the, What? You said who? Yeah we're gonna be doing A video with Trisha Over the weekend We're gonna be shooting A new podcast together She's my new podcast partner We're gonna tr- do a test run I Just wanna make sure you're there And you're available Are you available For the next couple of days? Yeah Are you? I don't know Are you scared of Trisha? No Big money involved <laughs> Yeah, and they no, like money. Not that I don't want to. It, um, it sounds fun. Yeah. You sound lame. Whatever, sound Steven. Like this no. is not about you. Let's get back to Mike here. So it's just funny how it works out. Mike is Logan's best friend. You know, his, his best friend is right-hand man on the podcast. And he's up in the nosebleeds. And it's just me sitting next to the ring. I got my fucking hands on the canvas. I mean, there's just fucking blood and sweat just flying onto me. And it was, it was like nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. It was incredible. It was such a, I mean, I know a lot of people have mis- mixed reviews about the results of the fight, yeah. but just being there was great. I had a great time. Something everybody should experience sometime in their life is sit ringside at a, at a big fight, like a Mayweather fight. But I don't, I don't know if there'll ever be another one after that. Is that your first time ringside or at a, at a fight like that? Yeah, that was my first time ringside. It's not? For now. That was. Yeah, that was my first time ringside. I've gone to one UFC fight before, but we sat in like in the bleachers, you know, up all the way up there in the nosebleeds, like where Mike was at. And it's rough up there because just everybody's just drunk and they just want to fight. But if you're down there in the mix, it's like everybody's respectful. There's cops around. You're right in the ring. You're with the cornermen. You're hearing them give advice. You could give advice to yourself if you want. Like I was telling Logan, throw, slip the elbow and bah. You know, you were Logan stuff on Mayweather. Sorry. Yeah, Mayweather. <laughs> Mayweather. I was trying to, I was trying to be sneaky about it and act like I would, like every time they would announce like Mayweather, I wouldn't clap, but Vince would clap because Vince is a big boxing fan and he's he would always want to like go to Mayweather's fights and he loves Mayweather, but it was weird because it was like Logan. They would announce Logan and I'm clapping and nobody else is clapping at my side. Oh my and God. Logan saw me and he's like, "Yeah." Oh, he saw you. He yeah, saw yeah. You. He didn't see Mike yeah, though. Respect. He didn't see Mike though because Mike was up in the fucking <laughs> most please. <laughs> Mike was fucking using up all the tissues in the whole stadium trying to stop that nosebleed. It's like that Jay-Z quote, you know, when Jay-Z says, we're at the same night, same fight, but one of these cats ain't playing right. I'll let you tell it. You know what I mean? You ever heard that line from feeling it? Mm-mm. It just means that I'm fucking doing it right. You know, you're on the winning team here, but you got too many things going on in your life that I'm scared we're going to lose you. You're going to fall behind. What? <laughs> Yeah, I had a crazy time out there with these guys. I had a, a really, really good time, and it was much needed. Did you much say needed. after for the, was it, not press conference. What did they no, do No, no, no. I went, I went right to a strip club after. Did you go to the uh, Mayweather strip club? No, I went to Eleven. It's a very popular strip club in Miami, but it's not like a trashy strip club. It's like a high-end, like luxury strip club. It's kind of more like a like a nightclub. Have you but been there? Like a stripper pool you, in the it's a nightclub, kind of like live, but there are naked women walking around, and... It, it is a lot of people throwing money and it's a lot of like rappers and celebrities so and it's, Wait, so have you did you go there when you were living in Miami it wasn't around when I lived there so oh. I go there now and I visit but unfortunately I left my credit card and ID there because I got a table <laughs> and you I left your credit card and ID. I had to come back through like 
go through airport security and stuff. I tried pulling up my fucking Wikipedia page. I felt like such a little fuck boy. Like, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Trust me. Like I, I can just look it up on the internet. Like I have a Wikipedia. I was so proud of this Wikipedia page. And he was like, nobody gives a fuck who you are. <laughs> yeah. Right, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Fucking shit are you fucking smoking? Okay. Yeah. I actually do that. That's a new one. Yeah. But, um, there's ways you could verify stuff. I had like credit cards, other credit cards and stuff like that. But I left my credit card at the club because I paid for it. And it was 8 a.m. when I left. I stayed completely sober throughout the whole time in Miami. I've been sober now forever, you know. I could have went for a goddamn run after, but it was just 8 a.m. I was like, fucking let me get the fuck out of here. They held on to the car just for me to completely check out, and I left. I forgot it. just slipped my mind. I had so many things on my mind. So, yeah. Now my credit card and ID is in a Miami strip club. <laughs> That's <and> fucked. I <laughs> did you have to, like, cancel your card? Well, yeah, we could cancel the card, or we could all go back and get it. I'm not, good at these, I'm not good hey, at these surprises. I'm not good at You're going to these. Miami, baby. <laughs> Where's my what? fucking bam, 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 bam? Wait, that's what it was this weekend? Yeah, that's what it is. It's not a video with Trisha. I mean, I Holy wish shit. Frenemies fell apart and it'd be great to get her on, but I want to take my boys, the Jeff FM squad, to fucking Miami. <laughs> I got ringside seats from, you know who? You know who gave me ringside seats? Four of them? He's a big fan of the show? Keemstar. Keemstar, put up a picture of Keemstar. These be actually he loves well, the show. He Keemstar. loves you, and what? he wants us there at the fight ringside for fucking what? Bryce Hall and all the fucking TikTokers. He and wants to see your be, little dick. You're gonna show your dick. We're gonna start you a fucking OnlyFans. You're gonna be well, rich. When the dick thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? bro, yeah. We're, we're we're gonna be out there fucking killing what? it. I was out there and I had the time of my life, but something was missing. I love what I do. I get to live out my dream by making content and doing fun stuff. And most of the time, I don't, I'm not a guy to brag, and I hate showing off vacations, and I hate like you know spending money and doing stuff like that but this was necessary you know we've been stuck in the house for a year i've been doing nothing but surgeries the only time i got on a plane was to go get surgery and get my eyes stitched shut for two weeks so this was like finally a time where i was not thinking about everything that i've been thinking about and making me depressed i finally feel like i've fucking overcome my depression with this trip and i know that's a bit of a stretch you know because it's it's an ongoing thing when you deal with stuff like this but early on into the accident i met up with marcus johns he's a friend of mine that used to do vine he was huge on vine you remember marcus johns is that the no. impersonator? I mean, the no, Marcus Johns. He, he, he was, funny, our, he was oh, our first guest on the barbershop. He's the yeah, guy, right? I fucked up he, the audio. Yeah, he was one of the first guests in the barbershop that we did a bunch of pranks on. He's Christian. He doesn't curse ever. He's face. like super clean, but he's like a really funny, talented guy. And he, um, yeah, he was the first guest in the barbershop. We lost the whole episode because Oscar fucked up the audio. My friend jumped out naked and scared him. And for him to be like such a Christian, like conservative guy, he was like freaked out. And it was, it was, it was a funny episode but marcus and i kind of lost touch after that because he got married and bought a house and kind of stopped doing so, so many social media collaborations marcus johns you know him you, you know the guy you have to know him he's like one of the Wait, top viners he was one of the top viners way back so marcus johns told me some great advice right after my accident because he had gotten in a horrible accident with his fiance and oh, they yeah. were on a motorcycle together and his fiance hated the motorcycle. She never wanted to go on it. And he's like, babe, just, just trust me. Just come for a ride once. And that one ride, they ended up getting smacked by a car that was running from the cops. Ran a red light, completely not his fault. Really messed them both up bad. Like he broke his whole hip, his femur. His wife got it really bad too. They were both knocked out for like a week. They had to like come back to consciousness. Like they were in like a coma from this accident. His accident was about two months before mine. So he had a little bit of time to process his injuries and stuff like that. At that time, I was so caught up in my life and creating YouTube videos and just pushing it for content that like even Marcus, I, I went to go reach out to DM him and I, I realized that I he had already sent me a couple messages and I didn't even see them because I was so caught up in my own life. And, you know, I guess that's why, that's why they say everything happens for a reason because I was meant to slow down and focus on the important things. And this guy is was one of my best friends and such a good dude. And he gave me such great advice. And I never really used that advice until this weekend. He said to me, right now it's tough because you can't really walk, you can't run, you can't work out, you can't do the stuff you love and you're only home focusing on the pain. And you're healing as we go, you're healing. It's just healing takes so long and you wish you could speed it up, but that's just not how the human body works. You could do everything like I do. Like every morning I do cryotherapy, hyperbaric chamber. Crying? Am I, am I crying? Yeah. I could be, this is an emotional story. Sorry. But it's leading to something good. 
You want me to come over there and strike you? You want, you want me to laugh? That'll cheer me up if I come over there and strike what? you. I was just asking you. Sure. You have a list of gadgets under the table, too. Yeah. Ball sitch. So Marcus Johns came over and I ran him through the whole story about what happened to me. And this is when I was keeping it a secret. I hadn't told anybody. It just felt so good to vent to him, somebody who I could relate to. Because, you know, accidents happen to everybody in life. And, and a lot of people deal with shit like this. And he told me that you only focus on the pain. It's not until, like you actually learn to distract yourself from that pain, live your life and just do the best you can. You don't realize, but you're healing every day. So a week could go by and if you're having fun during that week and you're not just like, oh no, my eye hurts. I need to just sleep or lay in the house and, and complain to my friends. I went out and I just had fun. I didn't think about my eye. I didn't wear fucking sunglasses. I was wearing clear glasses. It's absolutely true. Like I came back and I'm a little more healed and That's I had good. a good time. So I want to keep doing fun stuff. I want to mix it into our miserable lives here where we sit in this podcast room and make fun of each other. It's fun too, but I want you guys to be there with me. I want you guys to experience this trip, what I just did. Big fucking, you know, you, you heard the Jay-Z song. Same night, same fight. One of these cats ain't playing right. I'll let you tell it. And we're not going to be playing it wrong. We're going to be up there fucking ringside. Is it the same play, like the same area where they fought? Like yeah, the and if somebody drops out of the fight, you're popping in. You and, you, you and Bryce Hall. I'll beat the shit out of Bryce Hall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be with him. Dude, that was a complete joke. I scared didn't Bryce think about Hall? that. I forgot we're like recording. Wait, are you going for Bryce Hall? Or are you going for Austin? Who's Austin? Uh, the guy he's fighting that night, or the oh, the, the other dude, the Austin family McBroom, YouTuber Ace family dude. dude. Yeah, I I'm say we go Bryce. out there and we actually shoot a nice vlog, a nice Miami vlog, and we put something out that's more upbeat and a little happier than <laughs> the the dark stuff we've been making. I, you know, I came back a new man. Can you see? The, do I look like I just got back from Miami? Do I have a little tan? Do I nope. actually look? Because I wasn't. Out, I didn't get that much time out in the sun because we were out very late every night, and I just went for a couple of runs. Make it, give us both hands right now. <laughs> up, up the boost the fucking saturation. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna get fucking shirts with collars. We're gonna go in there and pop them, and we're gonna go right to sit fucking ringside, be on camera, and yeah. then we're gonna size them up. We're gonna let you guys know once my eye heals. We're getting in there. If you had to put 10 G's on one guy, yeah. which guy is it? I mean, to be honest, I know Bryce likes the street fight and stuff like that, but I don't think he has the natural gifts that good boxers need. Like athletically, like this build, his arms are a little short. I think he comes more from a wrestling background. I, I saw when he pushed Austin at the press conference, he kind of used his head. He went in there like almost like he was trying to use my double punch. Whap! But he fucking just put his head out there and you never want to stick your head out there first. I know he's been in training, but your instincts got to be like cover up, you know? Yeah. It can't be what? You know, you don't want to go in with your head first. So I don't know. I haven't seen anything from this kid, Austin, but um, I'm excited to see Taylor Holder, who was another first guest of the show. I fucking whapped him up, Is but he he's fighting? been training super hard and I think he's he looks really sharp. I think he's one of the best YouTube boxers out right now. Isn't KSI's brother fighting? What's his name? Deji? There's going to be a lot of interesting fights. I think it's going to be a shit show. I think it's going to be a mess. I think a lot of sloppy fights are going to happen. It's going to be embarrassing for the sport of boxing, but who knows? These guys are all taken a lot more serious now. It's a actual source of revenue for these people like it's a source of income you know one day you become a big youtuber and then you get canceled and you know there's no other ways for you to make money you could always just train for three months and hop in the ring challenge somebody talk shit and there you go million dollars we should bring the gloves with us and then somehow get on the ring me and steven <laughs> I think yeah. we should. I think just sneak it, okay. On the ring. Wait, so can we do that? I'm so <laughs> down. I mean, are, no, I'm so, yeah. are we all actually ring. going though? Is this is everybody um, down? Steven, if you don't go, we're not going. I want to go. Steven, this is a okay, life changing trip. Have you ever been to Miami Beach? No, I'm scared Have you ever of Miami. Been to Florida. I've heard so much scary shit about Florida. You're gonna be safe. Are we gonna be in like a nice part? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be staying in a luxury penthouse. We? You guys will be close by. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, you gotta bring that fucking knife. Bro, ringside seats were already expensive enough. Did you just say you got them for free? <laughs> <laughs> I got them off my likeness. I got them off our likeness, okay? Everybody's loving Jeff FM. Wait, and they also, want us there. just backtracking, you said you wanted to open a OnlyFans for Steven? What? What? Yeah, I think we I think we need to start profiting off of that dick of St Stevens. I think he loves to show it, and... What? It's not right. I, I mean, do you like money? Yeah. Do you like showing your dick? Yeah. Shit, <laughs> hold up. That's a no-brainer right there. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a fucking no-brainer, Steven. 
Let's fucking show that dick and milk the oh, fucking milk shit out of that right thing. Right now. <laughs> I yeah. will do it. No. Oh, it's right. The thing was in the way. Fuck. We got to go out there. We got to do a professional photo shoot for your OnlyFans. There's a ton of things I got lined up for us. We're going to ride jet skis. We're going to go on yachts. We're going to go to the fight ringside. We got a professional photo shoot. Like picture you doing a sports Ill- illustrated photo shoot. What you just showing you dick. Is it a girl though that's taking the picture? It's going to be scary. Oscar. It's going to be Oscar. Oh, okay. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. <laughs> Not with the random stranger woman. It might be hot. You might cash in big time. You might be richer than me when we come back. <laughs> Imagine. Let's go. Then you're, then you're really going to have this seat. <laughs> Steven, you actually, if you started an OnlyFans, oh you'd probably make 10 grand in like a weekend. I would do that right now. Whatever, bro. It's 2021. Everybody fucking, you know, sells their soul. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck either. That's why I'm going to fucking promote it right here. Sign up to see Steven's dick. I'm not taking a cut like Jake Paul does to his people. I just want you to have this for you. Let's go! Jeff and him I, crew is going to Miami. Yeah. Fucking ringside. And we're going to start a what riot. Day, what day is it? I want that button back. In three days? I want that fucking button back. <laughs> we leave tomorrow. We leave tomorrow? Yeah. Really? Oh, shit. We leave at Wait. 11 a.m. We're out of here. Are you fucking serious? No, we're out of here. Literally, we're, Wait, really? we're leaving here in hours. This Fuck. is the new spontaneous life you signed up for, Stephen. No more being scared. <laughs> no more being anxious. No more being, oh, no, we need a plan. I, I need to know what I'm doing. No, fuck all that. It's all out the window. <laughs> we're living life day by day, minute by minute. Whatever happens, we're prepared for it. We train for this. I love You and I boxed for fucking months upstairs yeah. when I was depressed. And I was like, fuck it. I don't want to leave my house. I'm going to wear my sunglasses. You know what? Fuck that. The sunglasses are covered coming off i don't give a fuck anymore this is like when a fat kid wears a t-shirt in the pool you know (laughs) (laughs) we know what's going on under there you're not you're not hiding anything you know Uh, but you know what let me put them back on because i am i mean i got fucking torn apart in the last episode and you guys still leave hate comments about the eye i'm working on it and it gets to me so you know it's like I guess technically if a fat guy wears a shirt in a pool, it's because they're working towards their summer bod and they're not prepared yet to show it off. But whatever makes you feel good. If you if you wanna if you wanna go out there and you wanna wear your t shirt when we do your nudes, as long as your pants are off. Oh, it's I'll fine. be butt naked, I don't care. Okay. Well uh, I'll let your boy for real, for real. Am I actually talking about actual penis? It's a it's penis. gonna you spread. Do do. I don't care. I don't care. It's, a, it's, all, a, it's, a, every, it's gonna get leaked. Oh I'm God. just trying to come up with money making <laughs> opportunities for all of us because this should isn't we, front of me where I rip people though? off and, and you know should I like tuck yeah. it or something? Or I want like, everybody to get rich. Like that song, that Jay Z song. And I know Oscar's pissed because he's like, Well, fuck it, I get a percentage of this and I, I wanna I wanna cut. <laughs> I want I want everything to be monetized and and that song will get this whole podcast and make no money but i don't give a fuck because we need it because that's the moral of this fucking episode is that jay-z song for those that don't know the song watch the patreon yeah. it's gonna be on that one and i know people are pissed at me about me talking about money i see the comments in the discord jeff talks about money too much jeff talks about his eye too much get over it well <laughs> that's, fucking, what, that's what steven's it, intro was it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> get over it yeah it doesn't work like that i wish i could get over it i wish i didn't have to fucking worry about the eye that. i don't want to talk about the eye anymore but i cannot how, how, how the fuck <laughs> you, you motherfuckers you fucking tell me don't stop talking about your eye i can't it i need various surgeries to fix it it's still not done but I'm not being a fat kid wearing a t-shirt in the <laughs> pool anymore you break them right there. now take them off Sorry. Bro, I like him right now. It's cool for the Miami vibe. Like, I'm going to wear sunglasses. when I'm, This is Miami Jeff. You know, I'm back. I know some people are like, is he using drugs again? No, I was completely sober. Did it, did it look enticing to have a shot when people are offering him? They're like, oh, you don't drink. You don't do this. And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm crazy enough. Trust me. Mm-hmm. I'll, I don't, don't want to go back to Dade one. County. Just going out in public and seeing people, seeing, you know, people that watch us in person. It just lightened up my mood it just changed my life this trip literally i was at a i was at a restaurant a popular restaurant and i got sent over a shot and i was like Ooh. oh no 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 like a thank you but no thank you i don't drink and she was like oh mr jeff we know and i was like what so why would you send me a shot she goes just take the shot okay that's and you know what it was 
It was LaCroix. Really? In the fucking thing. They had sparkling water. Well, it could have just been sparkling water with lime. I, could, I couldn't <laughs> tell the difference because I slammed it down. And I was like, you know what? I'll take a risk. I don't give a fuck. I slammed it. And I was like, that was fucking sparkling water, baby. And I went down there and I was like, so happy to see the people that sent me the shot because they're so... They're the real ones. You know, they know this shit. They're not just people that are like, oh, I love the barbershop. I love this shit. These people are invested in our lives now and they want to see us make a difference. They want to see the Jeff FM crew there at the fight. And you know what? We're going to go there. We're going to have a little fun, but we're going to stay healthy. We're going to stay off drugs. And we're going to just go out there, wheels turning, business moves, you know, making connections. Bryce Hall, I got an idea. I want to fucking trim your bangs down a little bit so your hair doesn't get in your eyes when you're in the fight, you know? Yeah. Because Bryce Hall's, his, his hair is coming down too much. What if that, what if he gets rocked and then his hair fucking flies into his eyes? That's going to be an that's issue. That's true. We should We can it. go there and fix that. That's, that's smart. Honestly, that's an issue that I saw um, in Logan's fight. The hair gets in the eyes and you don't want, trust me, from a guy with a fucking damaged eye, you don't want things getting in your eyes. So, so do these fight, do I'm going to go out fighters? there and help Bryce out. Uh, hopefully that might be the deal breaker that might help him win his fight, that might help him with this move that he does because he goes in there. Yeah, and yeah he can see. He needs to be careful, he yeah. He can't see what he's doing. He needs to know that he needs to cover up and that hair needs to be out of his his vision, his range like this. It should be like this. You yeah. know, these are your boxing gloves. I, I, I showed you. I, I touched the That'd be funny upstairs. as fuck if you fucked him over and gave him straight bangs for the fight. <laughs> <laughs> just right over his forehead well, we can figure it out I mean anything, anything's possible in Miami where is that place in Florida that all the old like parents go like, like what, Fort, Fort Lauderdale Fort Lauderdale no no uh, it's like Miami what's some, Boca of, like, big, what's some of the big places like? Orlando Orlando yeah or Orlando's where they have Disney World or Disneyland wow. whatever um, <laughs> Steve was like can we go there that's where, that's where <laughs> the crocodile it's just, that baby it's like only fans money there <laughs> and yeah you, we could travel the world bro we could fucking you go to Maryland? we could take this podcast on tour. We, yeah, my mind is just so open now. There is endless possibilities, and we're gonna take all these opportunities. We're gonna seize every opportunity that comes our way. Wait, what should I pack? Pack whatever. We got a fucking Amex for the business. We're gonna fucking go straight is to it, it, Ball Harbor shops. So we're gonna get you a Hermes it, Versace it, outfit. Were you close to Jake Paul, Jeff? At the fight? No, they were on the other side because I was in. Oh, you're I was on Mayweather's side. Well, I was, I was with, side like though. all yeah, Mayweather's yeah. kids were behind me and his like Mayweather's promoters and stuff like that. That's just the only way we get those tickets. We had to go. We had to infiltrate Mayweather's team. And I noticed you're on the winning corner of everything. It was nuts. I was nervous in the crowd. Like I was. I had fucking anxiety. Like. I was about to fight watching him. Did you get to go in the locker room or backstage? Yeah, we were backstage. We were all over the place. It was cool. Wait, do you when you're on like ringside? Do you walk down like the steps, like the main auditorium thing? Yeah. How do you, is it like blocked off so people don't? No, we like, had these in? Uh, like like all uh, like passes. Um, passes like we we oh, were so you like can go in the back. We were basically like judges. So you can like fight. go in the back. We go in the is back. That how you got go in and out? We want in the whole place. I don't know if these. Tickets will be the same, but they'll be close. We'll be up there. And also, let's let's talk about something else. So we recently, uh, in the news, this is probably not too new in the news by the time this comes out, but yeah, our favorite podcast, it fell apart. What a surprise. Yeah. Frenemies is like... Frenemies is done, bro. Really? They're done. done. Oh, the what? Even down. devastated. Yeah, they I never watched them, by the way. That's I, It was a good show. I understand why people liked watching it while it lasted. I saw from day one that that was a toxic relationship and it was not going to end well. And who'd have thought it would have ended over money? But there's a lot of stress that goes into making those types of videos. When you make fun of somebody and you're not just making... Like, Cody Ko does it lightheartedly. He roasts people. He, he'll make the same stereotypical jokes that everybody makes. Like, I do that with the barbershop. And sometimes I, I cross the line. Like when I did the Cody Co. Jake Paul thing and I realized I'm actually affecting people's lives here, that's a little too much. Let me take a step back. Other ones, I bring on Lele Pons. I make the same jokes that everybody else makes on the internet. She plays along. We all have a great time. We laugh about it. And those are the episodes I enjoy putting out. Those bring me joy in my life when, when the guest that comes on the show is also happy. You know, and we got to fuck around and make fun of each other and, and it's all laughs. You know, it's all about just being yourself. That's when you're going to be truly happy is when you could just be yourself and that's the type of content you make. What the fuck? I thought, so we're not going to, wait, 
No, we are going to Miami. That was a decoy story. Just oh. to make sure you're free. I, oh. I'm not doing a uh, podcast with Trisha, but it is interesting how it fell apart. And you know what? That's the game. You know, you know the game. Is that you at 19 when you went out there? And yeah, that's like, me on a tour where bus. I want to be. I'm on Wiz Khalifa tour. Look like you would bully me. <laughs> me in there? <laughs> yes. No, look you're at like me. A cool kid. Look at, I barely would... had any any muscle <laughs> Steven, mass. He, he makes fun of me. Now. <laughs> I was scared he to smoke with his weed. No, it doesn't bother me because he's like old now. But like, if he he looks like kind of like my age in that. Like douchey. Yeah. <laughs> like he would like make fun of me or something. I was wearing one of the Wiz Khalifa shirts because I was on tour with Wiz. I was good friends with Amber Rose and Big Sean and Mac Miller. They were all on tour together. You so meet these people out there. I met them through going to Miami. I moved to Miami. I got a job at this barber shop. Three weeks into that, Amber Rose came in and she's like, I want you to shave my sister's head. I was like, you look like Kanye West's girlfriend. And she was like, sweetie, I, I am Kanye West's girlfriend. And I face turned all red. I was all flush. I was all nervous. But I shaved their head ever since then, like whenever somebody came down to Miami and they asked like Amber, who's a good barber, or just like word of mouth, I would go do house calls. I would go to music video sets and stuff. How much would you charge? I didn't charge that much. I was just happy to be doing it. You know, like, would I, you charge like the normal person? Like I would charge race? like 50 bucks and I would ride my bike there. I would just be so happy just to be like a, a part of something. But I was just a young kid and I was happy to be doing it. And I met a lot of people through it and I still have relationships with these people to this day. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to know your relationship with Mac Miller. Mac Miller, I actually was good friends with. He was the nicest kid ever the first time I met him. He was like, give me give me your phone. He put his number in my phone so fast and he was just like, hit me up anytime. Where'd you meet him at? On tour. As soon as I went to the first tour stop, well, he wanted a haircut and I gave him a haircut West before Coast? the show. This was in... I think like North Carolina or maybe Maryland. It's like Maryland? we did a whole East Coast tour. We started out in Miami and then I, he was like, you want to come along with us and cut hair? And we just went up to like up Florida. We were in Georgia, Atlanta, and then we went all the way up to Canada. I don't remember any of it. I was fucked up the whole time. I was getting drunk. I was smoking weed, as you could see. Oh, yeah. uh, Wiz Khalifa's weed, which is it would get you insanely high that I would throw up. I didn't even have the tolerance to smoke his weed. It would make me puke. <laughs> And I still tried to do it because I was trying to be cool, you know, once I was like you trying to fit in and, you know, I'm, I would not, do trying stuff. To, I'm not trying to fit in. <laughs> I would do stuff to I fit in. I don't want to, I'm not trying to fit in. It's all right, Steven. I want you to be careful when we're out there. There's a lot of scumbags. There's a lot of people that are going to try to influence you to do bad stuff. Are you talking about like drugs and stuff? I'm talking about everything, man. I don't when do I, that When stuff. I was out there, I got influenced by the wrong people. And you know where I ended up in the slammer. Yeah. Big time. I don't want to see you go down that path, Stephen. <laughs> I don't want to drums. see any of you guys end Steven, up in Dade County unless we really have to go. I bumped into some old friends down there, some old guys that got me into the wrong stuff. Yeah. This one guy came up to me at the fight. He's like, yo, Jeff, I, I hit you up. There's this this coin I want you to promote. It's fucking, we're going to give you so many coins and you could just cash out once people buy in and it shoots up and you could sell it. And I'm like, you want me to pump and dump my fans? You want me to pump and dump my audience that I am completely transparent with and I built this relationship and it, it is 100% honesty back and forth for life. I don't plan on ever fucking ripping off my fans. And he couldn't comprehend that I didn't want to do that. It's like, uh, I just took it as such disrespect because you have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. You know, like, these are real people we're talking to and you want me to get them to invest their life savings thinking they're going to get rich and then we fucking rip all the money out. And then I, you know, I, I know people are pissed off about me talking about money, but this is a way where I'm just saying like, just be, be aware of what people are telling you to invest in. I like crypto. I like the big ones. I like Bitcoin. I like Ethereum. I like a, a couple of those. Cardano, fucking those guys. But this guy wanted me to promote fucking clout coin or some shit. And it was just like, bro, I'm good, dude. And he asked, he asked me like three times. And I'm like, fucking, I'm not doing no fucking pump and dumps on my fucking loyal audience that I love. And I, I would, you know, be devastated. I, I'm here trying to share knowledge of, of my Hell yeah. bad choices in life. So people don't have to go through them. I fucked up investing money multiple times. I fucking lost all my money so many times. So don't do what I did. Don't fucking invest in Nutsack coin. Don't invest in... I mean, out there, there were fucking planes. You know how the planes fly the advertisement? They're like, invest in cummies. And not Doge. Sell Doge, buy <laughs> cummies on the fucking plane. That's so weird. Where, yeah, it's Wait, just... really? I swear. Oh it was the craziest gosh. thing I've ever seen. It's just scams flying through the sky. Like, there's scammers out there. There's big-time scammers. 
And they sell guns and fucking you could walk in a 7-Eleven and you could have a display of guns and just be like, yeah, I'll take that Glock 40 and fucking that uh, (laughs) AK-47. We'll stay in the hotel. (laughs) (laughs) Miami, just picture everybody has a gun. Let's take a caller. See if we get somebody on the phone. Let's tell them we're going to Miami and they're not. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god call, call up Mike, call up Mike <laughs> Sheffer call up Mike Sheffer I, I just want to call you and thank you and I want to let you know that I am taking the whole entire Jeff FM team to Miami to sit ringside at the TikToker YouTuber fights everyone except for you well you're because not we only have four tickets but we just wanted to call you and check in because we haven't had you on the show. I wanted you to be here. You invited me. You could have said, hey, bud, come by. I'm shooting another Jeff FM. Why don't you come stop in? I see Oscar's got a jacket on. You got someone else in the, in the guest seat now. Well, we'll just we'll just uh, leave it at this. If you guys want to see Mike here as one of the co-hosts on the next episode when we get back, we could brag to him about the Miami trip and tell him all the fun stuff we did without him. <laughs> and just leave a little comment below, leave a like on the vid, and we'll have him on. If you don't want him on, also voice your opinion on that and say why. <laughs> I want you to I want you to get into detail and why you don't want him around anymore. It's open an open chat down below. Voice your opinion. It's a free country, you know? What a great birthday present to get a late FaceTime where you just use me for clout and content and to make fun of me yeah. and bring everyone else that does no fucking work and that brings <laughs> nothing to the table other than <laughs> You put you put Oscar in the back, pressing a few buttons. And get well, when you come back nothing. here, we will brag to you. Oh, he hung up. No, I hung up. <laughs> you hung up? Yeah, I don't want to be disrespected by him. <laughs> oh fuck, that was just getting good. Do you want to call him back? Yeah. Well, Mike, it's good talking to you. I can't wait to come back here and rub this trip in your face <laughs> and your fucking um, little. Did you get me really see a little? My or just I, can't I can't wait to rub this trip. Go yeah, I got you something. I got you this fucking coal. I got you coal that I keep in the back of the truck here. You could have it. It's waiting for you. That's a little Christmas joke. I know you don't know about it. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean it's not even that bad. Yeah, it's just, you know, we celebrate different holidays at the end of the year, but we're both equals. We're both people. You know, we're the same. You and I. I might just be about twelve inches taller, and you might have slightly better vision than I do. Yeah. Yeah. So, but look, at the end of the day, we're all friends. We have respect for each other. We have love for each other. And um, I wish you a safe flight. I hope you guys enjoy your time in Miami. I hope you get some great content. I hope you get some good stuff to talk about for the next episode of Jeff FM. And hopefully there's room for me on the couch at some point. But if not, I will support you from the sidelines. And uh, I wish you and the team all the best, Jeff. He's a good, genuine guy. Um, Yeah, he's a good guy. Can we get your uh, opinion on. Who's gonna win the fight? Can we can we call it here? Who do you think's gonna Who do you think's gonna take it? Bryce Hall or Austin McBroom? Or do you not even give a fuck? I have no idea who either of those. Yeah, who cares? Are. Whatever. <laughs> We're just going there to see and be seen, shake hands, and fucking, you know, get some numbers. Well, I'll leave you with this, Jeff. My hair is getting a little bit long, so if you ever decide to reopen the barbershop, you let me know, and I'll book an appointment. You're done here. Everything that comes out of your mouth. All right, go fuck yourself. We're going to Miami, baby. We'll see you when we get back, you motherfucker. Uh, YouTube is getting exciting yeah. now with all the violence. Dude, I'm saying you got to yeah. get in there, dude. Bro, Fucking seriously, Jeff. A lot of one. people were asking me out there. They're like, when are you going to get involved in this shit? And dude, I was come like, on. look at that Michael Bisping. He lied about his eye. Right, I, dude. Like, as soon as it get, like, I needed to realistically like get my vision not doubled. And once you're healed, man, it's fun. Once I'm man. healed, it's a... What if it's not... What if the opportunity is not there by the time your eye's healed? What if it doesn't... I mean, realistically, I weigh 160 pounds right now. So I need... I got a lot of work to do beforehand. Yeah. Or, otherwise, I can go fight Lil Hoodie right there or fucking... Uh, I feel like you can fight Taylor Holder. He's like around your Taylor size. Holder's, yeah, Taylor Holder would be a good matchup. He's sharp. He looks great. Um, and that'll be something hard to, for me to train for when he was because looking, he looks, he's been putting in work. Wait, wait, wait. So let's, let's, if your eye was perfectly fine, right? You never had the accident. And and Taylor, I mean, I'll go in there this weekend, and I'll I'll go right in that main event, and I'll fucking tie both my hands behind my back for the first round, and I'll give them a fucking baseball bat, <laughs> and I'll let them whap me in this fucking side of the head for the whole first round, and then I'll take the gloves off for the second Jesus. round. That's how confident I am. I I got my head smacked off a goddamn crane, and I didn't go to sleep. Think I'm worried about Bryce Hall knocking me out with his little. Wah! 
listen though, you know how he didn't have an opponent, like yeah. a YouTuber to fight for like the longest time? Yeah. It, say if your eye was perfectly fine, would you have taken that opportunity? Y'all have the same like hate, white, uh, height and weight, right? Um, it never came up. He never asked me. We, I, I actually kind of like Taylor, you know? Like, I mean, yeah, not kind of, he's my friend, you know, like genuinely, like I, I like the kid. Um, I'd rather fight somebody I don't know, you know, really? but yeah. Taylor would be a good challenge, but I don't know if I could actually see myself genuinely getting mad at him because he's been such a good sport to me in the past. He's done my show and he played along great. He was one of the first episodes. He, he would say he put you on. He says he put me on and, it, and it's just like me and Mike <laughs> Sheffer back and forth, you know? It would just be the perfect like match because of all the stuff y'all have done with content. And, I mean, like, I told you I'll other. get in there and I'll give him a fucking aluminum baseball I, bat and I'll let them have the first round with my hands tied <laughs> okay. behind my bat. My, oh my and God. just whack me in the head and I'll I'll eat the shots with a fucking aluminum bat off my dome for the first round. I'll fucking have a cigarette in my mouth too. I'll fucking be smoking a cigarette, hands <laughs> tied behind my back and just fucking taking taking the shots with the bat and then a ding, ding, ding. Next round, everybody's done. I'll do a handicap match. All of them at once. <laughs> so you're going to need more pills from Dr. Eamon after that. <laughs> Imagine Dr. Eamon watching this right now. He's like, he wants to do a follow-up in a month to check on my brain. Yeah. <laughs> he, he turns on the, the fucking TV and it's just me getting whacked in the head with a baseball bat. You, you know why you would be like a really good YouTube boxer? Is because a lot of these guys have like come from like little cushy backgrounds, you know? They're kind of just mm -hmm. like... Silver spoon. Have average, you know, upcomings and all that. But you have like, ha you're like talking on the podcast with Vince how you have like no fear, right? Like you just don't fear anything. So like going into a fight, having no fear would like be so beneficial. Like, you know, they're scared as shit. Like everyone, like, you know, I don't well, you know. You just gotta have fun with it. You know, I have, I do have fear. My first time doing stand up, I was terrified. Oh. I was in the back, like ready to go out on stage and I was opening for Jason. And Jason is an experienced comedian. He's been doing it for 20 years, but he was like, fuck it, Jeff, you're funny. I think you could do this. I think this is where your career is eventually going to go doing stand up. And he's like, just go out there and give it a shot. You want me to help you write jokes? And I was like, nah, fuck it. I'll fucking wing it. And I went out there and I was so nervous. Did you bomb? No, the first time I went out, I was really nervous. But the second you get out there and they cheer and you're like, oh shit, these people know me. And it's like, I'm basically going out to a room with my friends. So I got kind of like a cheat code into doing stand up because Damn. I already had fans. I didn't have to go through open mics and doing that shit. But I saw Jason and it was very comforting to see that Jason was nervous because Jason had been doing this for 20 years. And he goes, look, Jeff, you just, you get nervous every time. It never goes away. Like, I don't care if you're Dave Chappelle or you're fucking Joe Rogan or whoever, you're always going to be nervous before you go out. But once you get out there, you tell one joke, you get one laugh and it all goes away. And it's true. You, I went out there and I never thought I'd be doing any stand up. I hated public speaking. I hated talking in school. And now we're going on fucking tour. We're going to Miami and then we're going to fucking book a tour. We're going to do Jeff FM live in front of thousands, millions. Well, I mean, comedy. we'll do fucking hundred thousand seat stadiums. We're going to have that fucking arena sold out for Jeff FM live. Yeah. That fucking 80,000 seat Miami uh, Dolphin Stadium. We're going to do a Jeff FM live there. You know what those 100,000 people want to see? They want to see that fucking dick live. I would show it. Steven's going to brag the fuck out of Miami, bro. <laughs> He's going to be no All shirt. Right. I'm a suck, Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's going to push the box and you're going to be on the beach. I just want to know if this money is going to change you, this new fortune you're no, about to come I into. Don't. Oh, he's gonna to you know, Corinna, Corinna just started an OnlyFans. She's showing her, <laughs> what is it? her cans. <laughs> what is it? She's showing her cans and she's making fucking bank. And look, I can't do it. I tried doing the thirst traps. I just don't feel comfortable. Maybe in Miami, I'll take a couple thirst traps with you. And maybe we'll do one more round of thirst traps one more month on the Patreon. Maybe we'll pop up with some. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see you, how it goes. Look, I'm not planning things. I'm not trying to map out the whole thing. You thing with me? I'll do some oh. stuff with you, yeah. Oh shit, that would fuck <laughs> you. Do the the <laughs> <laughs> that would sound like a yeah. Holy fuck! Yeah, we're selling our bodies. All right, well, I guess we got to get to packing, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know what I'm packing? I'm packing fucking white suits and sunglasses. <laughs> That's it. Just white suits and sunglasses. What are you going to pack? My clothes. <laughs> My toothbrush. Jeff FM live in Miami, baby. Coming soon. Damn, I have to fucking pack. Sheesh.